Hi, I'm Marty Kelsey, one of the hosts of STEM in 30, a TV show for middle school science students from the National Air and Space Museum. Today I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico with Andy Richardson, owner of Adams Balloons. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Yeah, happy to be here. You guys actually built all of the balloons we see behind you. We did. Every balloon on the wall inside of the display room here was manufactured at this shop. And that includes the Smithsonian balloon? Yes, it was. That's, uh, that's our favorite one we've made so far. Now, you guys actually build and do some other things here in this shop, right? We, we do. We're full service, so um, on top of the manufacturing, we also offer repairs and restorations for existing balloons. So we're, we'll, we're full service. Great. Can we go take a look? Sure, absolutely. All right, let's go. Um, Andy, this doesn't really look like where you build balloons. What goes on in this room? This is our FAA certified repair station. So uh, all existing hot air balloons uh, will need annual inspections and reoccurring maintenance. So this is our facility in the lower level of where we manufacture balloons that's specifically set up for uh, maintenance, stress testing, stress analysis of the condition of the aircraft after its initial production is finished. So um, it's very similar to a local airplane shop or a, a machine shop at an at a airline. We, we do maintenance specifically for balloons to make sure that the aircraft is safe to fly for the next year. And that includes the, the actual balloon, the envelope, the basket, and the burners? Yes, the whole thing. If it's part of the balloon, we're certified to work on it. Awesome. Should we go take a look at where you actually put them together? Absolutely. Let's go look at it. All right, let's go. This looks more like you would actually build a balloon up here. Can you tell us uh, what's going on on the table? Sure. So we're in the process of manufacturing a new balloon right now. And what we do is we layer the fabric on the table multiple times. Uh, and then we have a paper pattern that we lay on top of the fabric. And once we lay the paper pattern on, then we use our little grease markers and mark right over the top of the fabric to make the outline or trace the edge of the, of the paper. And then it's up to the electric fabric cutter here to, to go right over the top of the fabric and it cuts all the panels identically, which makes it much, much easier for sewing. When, if we were to cut the panels individually, you do have some possibility for human error to come in. But with doing it all at the same time, it allows all the panels to be identical so they all match together. What's the fabric made of? It's ripstop nylon. Uh, we order it wholesale from the company that weaves it. And we have a special request when we have the fabric finished so that it's got a coating on it that can withstand high temperatures and direct UV light. How long does it take you to build a balloon? From start to finish, from the day we start cutting the fabric to the day we're ready to test inflate the balloon is typically 10 to 14 days, so about two weeks. And you guys actually not only make the, the envelope of the balloon, but you do all of the parts, right? We, yeah, the only thing we don't make are the tanks. So we, make, uh, we weave the baskets, we bend the tubing for the burners, we make the housing for the burners, we, we do everything here in-house. Tell us about the Smithsonian balloon that was built right here. It was, yeah, it was built in this shop. We had reached out to the Smithsonian because uh, they already had one of our baskets on display and we offered to help them complete their collection and add a balloon to the to the museum. So they graciously accepted and, and we made them a balloon. And and you guys actually tethered it out at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazi Center and flew it out there? We did, yeah. Uh, we were invited to come to the Be a Pilot Day and we were so excited to be to be part of the event. So uh, we tethered for about four and a half hours and got almost 500 passengers up. That's really cool. Where did you learn to make balloons? I interned, uh, when I first got into the business, I interned at a repair facility similar to what we saw downstairs. From there, I transitioned into making an experimental balloon, which the FAA allows for non-commercial use. And I enjoyed it enough, and I understood the process at that point. I was more intrigued into getting into the actual big market. So over the last seven years, we've worked towards that, and we're fully certified now through the Federal Aviation Administration for full production. And you don't just make normal looking balloons, you guys do some interesting shapes as well. We do. One of our, one of our claims to fame is the Adams Company was the original special shape hot air balloon manufacturer. He, he certified, Mike Adams uh, certified the first ever special shape hot air balloon in 1976. And we have carried that tradition on. We're currently the only manufacturer in the U.S making domestically built special shape hot air balloons. And it takes a little bit more work to get those to actually be able to inflate and, and stay in the air, right? Correct, yeah, there's, there's, there's much more uh, involvement from a piloting standpoint, from a construction standpoint, to, 
to even just rigging and inflating the balloon. It's, it's a very intricate process that's unique to each shape itself. And you guys actually have to think about how the, you know, the, like on the Dragon, how the wings inflate, and not only how the wings inflate, but how the air comes out? Correct. You have to imagine basically a vein system in the balloon where we channel the hot air in the upper part of the appendages. As the hot air cools, it has to come back down and be piped back into the balloon so that the appendages of the balloon are constantly circulating the hot air to keep them buoyant. So it's a, it's a very, very tough process to get, to get down. Do the special shaped balloons fly differently? They do. Special shaped balloons react differently in wind. They react differently with other variables. Um, so the inflating process, getting the air to inflate into all the appendages, uh, the process of even getting them to deflate is very unique. So it's a, it's a challenge from a pilot and a crew standpoint to operate the special shapes. And the Dragon balloon, how much does it actually weigh uninflated? Uh, in the bag, the Dragon comes in right at about 700 pounds. So it's, it's, a, it's a large participation sport when it's time to get the Dragon out. How many people does it take to, to launch a special shape balloon? Uh, usually you want a, a pilot and a crew of about 10 to 15 people just to make sure that you're, you're capable of handling any wind situations or anything like that. Where did the designs come from? Um, honestly, the imagination is your limit. Um, you, we can build basically any shape. So um, when I was a kid growing up, uh, Peter Pan was one of my favorite movies, and at the end, Captain Hook's pirate ship it flies through the sky, and that was li literally where my thought process was, I guess, for doing a, doing a flying pirate ship. That was what gave me the idea, and then it just was simply sitting down and designing it so that it was aerodynamic enough to fly. Now, how do you design these balloons? We use a CAD program. We use an, uh, a computer program that does all of the stress analysis, all of the calculations, and we simply just fact check it during the building process to make sure that the computer has talked to the printer properly and that it comes out to the cutting floor so that we can produce the balloon exactly how the computer says. That's not how you used to do them, is it? No. Uh, when I first started, we literally would do graph paper and we had a square and a, a 90 and we would make the massive patterns ourselves on the tables and the construction process took weeks longer but now that we let the computer do it, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward process. I imagine there's a little bit of math involved in that. There is. <laughs> there sure is. <laughs> it, uh, it made me wish I worked a little bit harder in school, but we, we, got, it, we got it figured out. So, How do you take something that in the end is going to be three-dimensional and build it out of two-dimensional materials? Uh, we put an internal structure inside of the balloon. If, if you ever look inside of a special shaped balloon, you'll see that there's almost as much internal fabric inside of the balloon as external fabric, which allows the angles to inflate, the ship's sails to inflate. It's, it's very complex internally uh, in comparison to the pretty shape you see on the outside. I see the shapes here and they, they seem a lot smaller than what you would think of a giant hot air balloon. How does this all go together? Well. Piece one fits to piece two, so the top and the bottom of the balloon are substantially smaller than the, the middle panels in the equator. So as the balloon gets larger into the middle, it, the, pan, the panels get substantially bigger. But um, it's basically a massive quilting project just on a huge scale. So we take panel one, so to two, two to three, three to four, as we construct the whole aircraft. And then with the artwork, you build the artwork first? Uh, we actually build the gores of the balloon. And then once the gores are completed, we would create the artwork and then overlay the artwork on top of the, of the balloon. So that as we close the balloon, all of the artwork is already applied to the balloon. Seems like there's a little bit of cutting and sewing involved in this. Yes, it's, it, it's, a, lar it's a big process. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us around sure, today. Sure, not a problem.